Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five things you should never do in an automatic transmission vehicle. And this is kind of a follow-up to the video I did, uh, five things you should never do in a manual transmission video. And I think just as important as to understanding, you know, what you shouldn't be doing is understanding why. So I brought some parts along. This is part of a torque converter. And so we're going to be looking at, you know, kind of how mechanically automatic transmission works so that we can better understand uh, why we shouldn't do certain things in them, which I think is just as important as understanding what you shouldn't be doing. Doing. So the first one we're going to talk about is that you should never put your vehicle in neutral when you're coasting down a hill. And so the logic behind this may be that, you know, you can save fuel economy by putting it in neutral and coasting down the hill. And let's say you're on a tall hill and you're about to go over a shorter hill. If you put it in neutral, you can gain a lot of speed and gain enough speed to go over that smaller hill without, you know, getting on the gas. Uh, and so you can save some fuel by doing that. But the other thing is when you do have it in gear and you're coasting down a hill, modern transmissions and modern vehicles, what they'll do is they'll cut fuel to the engine. So you'll just use the wheels which are connected to the transmission and thus the engine because it's in gear to shut off the fuel injectors and so the wheels will be powering uh, the engine. And so in that case, you won't be using any fuel. So as you're going down that hill, you won't be using any fuel. And you can see this on fuel economy indicators. Uh, if you put it on neutral, it'll read something a little bit lower. And then if you put it in drive, then you can notice that the instantaneous fuel economy will go up to the highest number that it can read uh, because it's shut off fuel from going into the engine. Now, the other reason why you don't want to do this, and there's really three reasons, is that it kind of takes a bit of your control out of the vehicle. So when you're in neutral, you only have the ability to slow your vehicle down. You no longer have the ability uh, to speed up because you're not in gear. So you're taking out part of your control from it. And the third reason, if those aren't good enough uh, for you to not put it in neutral when you're coasting downhill, it's often illegal in states. So I started looking up uh, the law in a bunch of different states. Not every state, but I found 15 states, and I will include links links to all of these states' uh, laws in the video description, uh, but there's a huge list of, of states, uh, Arizona, California, Colorado, Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, and so on, 15 states which I found citable uh, sources. Uh, you can go onto these government websites and see the law where it says do not put it uh, in neutral because you're taking yourself out of control uh, of the vehicle. So, you know, if those aren't good enough reasons, one and two, then the third reason, uh, it may be illegal where you live. So, you know, look up your local uh, laws to figure that part out, but regardless, uh, it could be illegal where you live. Moving on to number two, whenever you're changing directions in an automatic transmission vehicle, you want to make sure you come to a stop before switching from drive to reverse or from reverse to drive. So backing up, come to a stop, then put it in drive, and then move along. And so the reason why you want to do this is because you're using your brakes to stop the vehicle rather than your transmission. Your transmission is designed to shift gears. Your brakes, on the other hand, are designed to stop the vehicle. So this is an automatic transmission band. And what this does is it clamps down around the housing of a planetary gear set. And when you do that, you alter the gearing of the planetary gear. So when you're in reverse or drive, you know, this may be open. And then when you put it into the other one, it'll clamp down on a drive. So this works a lot like uh, the reverse of a drum brake. So instead of pressing out like a drum brake, this squeezes down on a drum. And so what you're doing when you change that direction is you'll be using these bands as well as clutches. Uh, automatic transmission also have multi-plate clutches within them. And so when you switch gears, uh, these bands will clamp down uh, to change the gearing. And when it does that, you're using this material here on this uh, automatic transmission band to stop your car rather than the brakes, uh, which are very easy to service and cheap to replace, uh, versus this part, which was only $18, uh, but very difficult to access. So it's going to take you a lot of time to replace it or a very expensive repair. So come to a stop uh, and then put it in the gear that you need to go in. Number three, we're going to talk about launching your car. Now, obviously, if you want your car to last as long as possible and you want the maximum longevity out of your transmission, then you should never launch the vehicle. Uh, it's going to put a lot of stress and strain on it. But uh, there's different methods that I've seen people use, and some of them, you know, are kind of dangerous and you should never do them. So one of the methods I've seen that people have done is they'll rev it up in neutral and then they'll drop it into drive and let that carry their car forward. Um, and so that's kind of a dangerous way of launching your vehicle. And we're gonna get into why using some parts. So here we have a torque converter and this is the pump or the impeller. And so what you're gonna have is the engine which is gonna be connected to a flex plate and that flex plate is going to be connected to this. So this has been cut off uh, so that we can see the inside of this torque converter. Uh, but know that this is always going to be rotating with the engine. So this is the pump uh, or you could call it the impeller. 
And within this, we have the stator, which we'll go ahead and set aside. What that does is it reverses the direction of the fluid uh, when it's transferring between uh, one side from the pump to the turbine. And so here we have the turbine, and so you can see an internal spline there, and this is what's gonna be rotating uh, with the transmission. So this will be splined with the transmission. As the uh, impeller rotates, it will force this turbine to rotate, and as the turbine rotates, it will rotate the transmission and thus the wheels. So this is a fluid coupling, and so what that allows you to do is have a difference in speed between your transmission and your engine. So your engine can be rotating, and your transmission can stay stationary, uh, as I'm demonstrating here. So this is connected with the fl uh, flex plate, and as that rotates, uh, you can see the transmission can be held still. So when you're at a stop, uh, that's what will be happening. This will be rotating, and the turbine will just be stationary because it's connected to your wheels, which are not moving. So when you launch and you rev it up in neutral and then you put it into drive, what you're doing is you're going to be having friction between this uh, this band and the drum which it's resting around as that tries to clamp down to send power through it. And so you're going to have clutches and bands within your automatic transmission that are going to be trying to absorb that power, but you're going to have slip because you're sending so much power through it. And these are designed to shift gears, not to handle a launch. And so you're sending power through it and you're going to be wearing out this band. As I mentioned, it's going to be very expensive to replace it. So rather than putting it in neutral, revving it up, and then putting it in, in drive, which is just kind of crazy, what you want to do is put your foot on the brake and put your foot on the gas, build up uh, some pressure within this torque converter so that you're putting a lot of torque to that impeller, which is, or to that turbine, which is stationary. Uh, and then the second you let off the brake, you're sending all that torque and all of your clutches and bands are already locked up in the position they need to be, uh, so you're not going to have any slip. Now, yes, you're going to put a lot of strain on your transmission, and it's not like a great thing to do for it, uh, but it's a lot less dangerous than putting it in neutral, revving it up, and then putting it into drive, and then letting the clutches and bands handle all that torque and try and get power to the wheels and spin your tires rather than spin these bands, uh, which will be very expensive to replace. Moving on to number four, there's no reason to put your car in neutral when you're sitting at a stoplight. It's fine to leave it in drive, and that's something that some people will commonly do is take it out of drive uh, for several reasons. They may think, okay, it's putting a lot of stress on your transmission. But let's think about that for a moment. If you're sitting there with it in drive, and so your engine is spinning, and my hand, which is touching the turbine, obviously isn't moving, uh, so your engine's spinning, this isn't, so you're putting uh, some stress on the transmission. And yes, that's absolutely true, you are doing that that. Uh, but let's think about it. Once you let off the brake and you start accelerating, you're putting a far greater force into that turbine uh, to move your vehicle forward than if you're just sitting there with your engine idling and it's trying to put some of that energy into the turbine. So really you're not putting any additional stress on it. Um, it's, it's far less than you are when you're actually accelerating. So it's kind of crazy to think, oh, I shouldn't do that. Uh, the second thing, you know, some people will say it can save fuel economy. And, you know, when you are in drive, you know, obviously you're going to be putting uh, some of that energy into trying to rotate this, and you're rotating against an object which is stationary, whereas if you put it in neutral, you know, it can spin much easier because you're disconnecting uh, from the transmission. Well, the thing is there, you will tend to idle higher in neutral uh, versus being in drive, um, but regardless, it's not going to be a big fuel economy difference. I actually had a Volvo in, uh, which gave a live readout of your fuel economy while you're sitting there. Uh, at a stoplight, and it said it was using 0.3 gallons per hour. So if you think that you're just going to sit at a stoplight for, let's say, 30 seconds, uh, you do the math, that's 0 0.0025 gallons uh, to sit there at that stoplight with it in drive, uh, as I had it in that Volvo with the live readout. And so, you know, you're not really going to be using that much fuel. Now, if you're sitting in, you know, stop and go traffic, there's a ton of cars, you're surrounded, so, you know, there's no need to, to you know, get out of an emergency situation or anything like that really quickly, and you're just stuck, you're stopped in traffic, and you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're going to get maximum fuel economy, just turn your car off. If you're just going to be sitting there, there's cars all around you, it's a safe time to do it, turn your car off and just let it sit there uh, so you're not using any fuel. Like, that's the, the easy solution to saving fuel if that's the reason why you put it in neutral 
from drive. And then the other thing, you know, switching from neutral to drive, uh, you know, you might think, oh, there's going to be less wear, things like that. And you are going to be using these bands as you switch from neutral to drive uh, to clamp down on the transmission. Either way, it's not going to be a lot of wear because your vehicle isn't moving and there's not a whole lot of energy being put into that transmission. Um, so I wouldn't really worry about wear of doing it from neutral to drive, but there's really just no good reason to take it out of drive. Just leave it in drive when you're sitting there at the stoplight and, you know, you're not putting any additional wear and you're not really going to be saving any fuel. Moving on to number five, you should never put your vehicle in park until you've come to a complete stop. So you should never put it in park while the vehicle is moving. Now here's the thing, most automatic transmissions, especially modern ones, will not allow you to do this, but it's cool to understand why. When you put your vehicle in park, you're applying a pawl, essentially a locking pin, into a gear which is connected to your transmission's output shaft. Your driven wheels are connected to the transmission output shaft, so when this is locked, your wheels cannot move. Now, if you were to engage the parking pin while the vehicle is moving, and there weren't systems to prevent this from happening, you could very easily shear the locking pin and break it as it attempts to completely lock up a transmission in motion. Either way, you'd be putting a huge amount of stress into your drivetrain and transmission. Now, I really can't think of any scenarios where you might think it's a good idea while you're moving to put it in park, uh, but let's say you're trying to come to a stop and you can't really figure out how. You've got acceleration happening and you can't prevent it, uh, your throttle is stuck for some reason. The first thing you should do is firmly press your brakes. Your brakes are always going to be able to outpower your engine. Now, you may use up that vacuum assist, and so because of that, you may need to press really hard in order to get the brakes to successfully work because once you run out of brake assist uh, from the vacuum pump and you've got full throttle uh, you're going to lose that assist and so you want to make sure you press that firmly uh, it may not seem like it's working because you don't have brake assist so you've got to push really firm the other thing you can do is downshift so as you downshift you'll start to slow the vehicle down and so that's another method of bringing your vehicle to a stop so thank you guys for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below so I have this Peruvian mango box, which I was using to store the torque converter in. Who knew there were so many ways to eat a mango? You can eat it on a fork, cut the skin and peel it, and there you go, eat it on a fork. You can slice them, you can dice them, or you can eat it with a spoon. Amazing. Mango, such a versatile uh, fruit uh, to, you know, get your vitamin C on.